would this fish be? Good to see the pen's getting a workout. Inside me, I'm like, whew, I got this. I know what this one is. Boom, let's see. Snapper, snapper, snapper. But then so did everyone else. Snapper, snapper, snapper. Well done, all of you are still in the game. Number two, here comes the next one. No cheating. How's that for a fish? When he pulls out this big, ugly fish with this mouth on it, I'm thinking I'm in trouble now. Oh, my Lord. Few people riding, not many, though. And I see this kind of contorted, long neck, creepy-looking thing, thinking, how the hell would you fill it that? I don't even want to know what fish that is. This is early days. This is number two. They get a lot harder from here. Let's see. Turn them over. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dear. <laughs> a lot of variety amongst you all here. <laughs> it was, in fact, a John Dory. Who's got John Dory? One, two, three, four, five. I know what a John Dory looks like. To be honest, I know it because of watching previous MasterChefs. Right, if you didn't have John Dory, step back. You are out. It's incredibly nerve-wracking. You don't know what's going to come next, and you can be kicked out at any stage. I'll give you an easy one, eh? All right, you got it? Yep. OK, that's down. Turn them over, let's see. Mm, interesting. It was, in fact, a conga eel. But we will accept eel. We will not accept hokey and hokey. Hayley and Chris? Yeah. My friends are going to absolutely kill me for doing that. They're sort of one of the easiest fish to identify. Here comes the next fish. Three out of three now. Pretty good, Lily Brown. What could that possibly be? Turn it over, please. The squid was right. In fact, it was an arrow squid. So, well done, Tim. Let's go to the big fish. What is this beautiful looking specimen? Five, four, three, two, one. Turn them over. Uh, Leo, what actually have you written there? Uh, Kawai? Oh, I thought it said Kofi. I thought you were putting up a tree. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's a Kawai? Yeah. OK, you got the spelling wrong and you got the fish wrong. It is, in fact, not a Kawai. It is not a salmon. It is not a yellowfin tuna. Yellowtail kingfish is correct, and I'll take kingfish and kingfish. Four of you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Process of elimination. You guys have scored highest and our fish quick fire. That means you will not have to cook in this oh first God. challenge. So well done. <laughs> you can head up to first class and watch from there. Um, if I can go the whole way without cooking, that'd be great. But I think it'd be called Master Observer, not Master Chef. Oh. Congratulations. Yeah. Nice, guys. Well done, guys. I'm so relieved to be safe, but there's a part of me that knows that not cooking is a little bit of a disadvantage. Look at that. There you go. That looks fantastic. It's a, um, it's a gutsy call. How do you feel? There's no, no going back now, No, no, no. It's uh, either I make it or not, so... Leo's just in front of me, and I look over, and he has this whole fish in a wok. He's got balls. Who would cook a whole fish? I mean, what if he stuffed that up? He is screwed. I'm making an aioli. So I'm just separating the whites and the yolks. I find it easier to do it through your hand. It's just a regular aioli. I've got a bit of garlic in there and a bit of mustard to bind it all together. With the red pepper being roasted, it adds a nice rich flavour, and it's, it's beautiful. Five minutes, OK? Five minutes. You should really be getting close to bringing it together. It's time to cook my squid, and I am so worried. I've had the grill heating up, so it's nice and hot. Ready? No going back now. I've put it on the grill, and I'm waiting for it to curl up. And it just doesn't seem to be happening. I don't want to kind of leave it on there for any longer than I have to. I don't want to overcook it. I'm getting it off. So I just take it off and just kind of curl it myself. It's going to just keep cooking sitting there, so I hope they understand that. I am very happy with my plating. I am taking time. I am putting extra salt in the dish because the last time I cooked, the judges felt that my dish wasn't salty enough. So I found a proper serving dish to plate the, my fish and fit everything in there. Pretty much happy in the end. 
I'm plating up the dish, got the broad beans down, got the nice little pieces of poached fish fillet on there, salsa on top, with a little bit of squeeze of that lime juice, it's looking really good. 60 seconds, you've got under a minute, under a minute before you have to step away from your benches. All done. In one way, I'm feeling quite confident about the dish, and in another, I'm feeling quite sceptical. It's amazing what you can do in that last 30 seconds. A little bit of zhuzh at the end, and away you go. Feeling all right now, not too bad. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. From your benches, please. I am taking the dish up to the judges, and I am proud. I'm going to read it on a menu. What would it say? King of the sea. King of the sea. You'd probably need a bit more of a description. Um, the dish is medium rare kingfish with a spicy quenelled potato, charred asparagus, and a lovely cream infused with fennel. The fish, it's, it's like, it is exactly what you said. It's, it's grilled medium rare. Yes. So it can be a little bit confusing that are you trying to have a raw dish or are you trying to have a cooked dish? When I tried the sauce, yes. it's quite salty. If you've seasoned this well, yes. if you're adding more salt, it's yes. going to be too salty. So watch, sure. watch that. Thank you. Well done, Luke. It's quite salty. Um, I guess I was trying to overcompensate for my previous dish. The feedback I got from the judges was it's not salty enough. We'll be careful with that because it can really overpower the dish and all yes. I'm getting is salt. I love their feedback because that's how I learn. I'm doing everything I can and I'm very happy. OK, Jess, up you come. I think I have done enough. I'm really happy with all the elements. I'm just a little bit worried about my squid. I'm really hoping that the two pieces I plated are perfect. Presentation, I think is really good, actually. What would the menu description of this dish be? Grilled squid with a fresh herb salad and a red pepper aioli. I think you probably could have cooked your squid a little bit longer. Yeah, I was just really scared about overcooking it. It's nice, but I do want a little bit more. Aioli's good, but the squid, it's tough to eat. And there has been some really good dishes today, I know, like so far. like everyone's critiques, it's like a hard act to follow. Oh, I'm gonna let the other boys taste it. Thank you. It's a little bit chewy. Mm. Maybe a little more salt in the salad, but nice little summer salad. Yeah. the term tough as old squid. I have now. I just needed more. Yeah. I needed more time. Salad's delicious. Aioli's delicious. Little potato on the side. Mm. Great. You know, a little bit of texture. Your hero is a bit tough. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. I'm praying there is like a glimmer of hope that someone done something worse than me, you know, screwed up majorly. Lily, Jess, Gideon, I hope you've all got some nice fish left. You know the deal, we talked about it, you have to cook again with any of the fish that you've got left over. Now the good news is that the pantry's yours throughout the challenge. The not so good news is you've only got 30 minutes. And the bad news is one of you will be going home after this challenge. I have to cook again, I'm well prepared to cook again. I think uh, I definitely Needed the second chance. I can't believe I'm in the bottom three. I was very happy with my dish. Give us something really incredible. I was hoping I didn't have to cook with the little tentacles, but it's happening. Me and the squid meet again. <sighs> I don't like that one bit. Your time starts now. Guys, let's go. If Lily can't win this challenge, there's something seriously wrong, because she has got a magnificent piece of fish. The other two with the monkfish and the squid, they've got a little bit of work to do there to make it great. I can come back. I might just go get started. Cheers. Cheers. Go. Oh, my God, look at his little eyes here.
I've got the tentacles left, so that's what I've got to work with. I'm just going to cut below the eye. Listen to that crunch. Yes. So I'm just going to get this little bit out. I'm just going to prep these up, and I'm going to I'm going to fry them. Who doesn't love fried calamari? Exactly. With a nice bit of sauce and some fresh lemon. It'll be beautiful. Yeah, I like your confidence. That's great. Yeah, and you I keep mean, keep that up. You just believe. You just I mean, get in there. This is in the end. It's just the beginning. So I've got, I've got to put it all out there today, and that's what I'm doing. I'm going to make Thai fish cakes today. I'm sticking with the Thai theme. Um, I like the flavours, the ginger, coriander, and all of that stuff that makes the dish go zing, pop in your mouth. What's going through your mind? I have to keep it simple, flavorful, and make sure it's got um, the right balance. It's just for you guys, eh? Great, I'd great. Think, well, I you think. keep at it. They look like good ingredients. Thank you. What I am going to do is sakura-style sashimi with a zesty ponzu dressing. Lily, that looks like a big daikon radish. Okay. Nearly as big as your kingfish. You've got plenty of fish left, so there's no excuses there. Thinking about seasoning. Yes. Thinking That's... about balance. I'm having a bit of an issue with seasoning. And one time they told me it's not enough, next time they say it's too much. So I am super cautious in the amount of salt in my dish. So I am diluting the ponsu sauce with some grated Japanese daikon, which adds freshness to the dish. So I'm looking at the time and it's all going on. It's all pressure, pressure, pressure. OK, guys, it's nearly halfway now. Nearly 15 minutes gone, 15 minutes to go. Where's the love, guys? Show them some support. My money today would be on Lily and Jess staying and getting and going home. But who knows? Yeah. So I start making my aioli, you know, the regular way. And the first challenge my aioli was a little bit garlicky, so I'm just going to hold back on that a bit. I'm adding my oil in and it's taking a while. And then I take the lid off to have a look. This isn't working, it's not thickening. And it's split. I don't have time to start again. I've got to give this challenge all I have because I really don't want to go home. I'm not ready. I don't really think I'm terrible. You know, um, like I listened to what they told me in the, from the previous challenge and um, I really hope I've improved on that. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. What are the herbs that you used? So the, um, I've got coriander there, which I just like quickly deep fried. So a little bit of texture, something a little bit different, and a bit of deep fried chili for a bit of a kick. Great. Thanks, Jess. Thank you. <laughs> Jess. Fried calamari, fried herbs, fried chilli. You had a bit of a mare with the aioli. In the end, it was just a little bit of oil and a little bit of lemon juice as a sauce. Really wish my aioli worked out, but I wasn't happy with it, so I wasn't going on the plate. Gideon. You really picked up the game. You pushed the envelope. You showed great inventiveness, technique, good flavour. You're safe. Congratulations, well done. It's all right, it's all right. Well done. Well done. I'm humbled to still be here. Unfortunately, it's at the expense of Jess. It's just heartbreaking to see her dream shattered. Jess, we're really, really sorry to see you go. It's been great having you here. Please, please follow your food dream. But I'm afraid it is time to leave the MasterChef kitchen. <laughs>